Now let's compare and contrast C and C DNA versus RNA. What's the thing that both DNA and RNA have in common? What's the way that we can compare these two? They are both nucleic acids. And so if they're nucleic acids, they're made of nucleotides. This is important. It's important to understand that these, they're the same. They're made of the same thing. They're structurally very similar. So what are some things that are different about them? Well, first of all, DNA has the base thymine. RNA does not have thymine. It has uracil instead. So if I got crazy in this house and I decided to throw out some nucleotides for you, you could look any nucleotide that you saw that had a thymine in it, you would know that's a DNA nucleotide. Done. No more questions asked. Any nucleotide that has a uracil in it, done. RNA molecule, no questions asked. There's another difference, and you already know this one. What's the sugar in DNA? Deoxyribose is my pentose sugar that is in DNA. What is the sugar in RNA? Ribose. Ribose is the sugar in RNA, ribonucleic acid, as opposed to deoxyribonucleic acid. The other thing that, this one's a little bit tricky. Normally, um, not normally, um, Familiarly, DNA comes in a double strand. DNA, who I was about to say DNA never comes in a single strand, but you can split it apart from its other strand and then do stuff with it. So I guess you could kind of say that it's kind of in its own strand. But in its normal, what, normal structure in its normal existence, it's a double-stranded molecule. There's two strands of nucleotides wound around each other. Um, D RNA often is single-stranded, but guess what? It can fold on itself and form double-stranded parts to make different shapes. And we'll see that when we look at protein synthesis, at the process of translation, we'll see that there are molecules of RNA called tRNA, and they actually bend in on each other and form unique shapes. Yeah, that's good for me. So you should know the general differences between DNA and RNA because we are going to be playing with both of them, especially when we look at DNA function. Okay, we're going to take two separate looks at the process of DNA replication, and its structure helps you understand how replication might occur.